Um, you want to know their starting line? Yes. Okay. Uh, Cordy Glenn is at left tackle. No, he's not. <laughs> he's out. He's uh, out. Yeah, out. Cordy Glenn's out. Andre Smith, uh, because obviously Jonah Williams is out. So Andre Smith is your starting left tackle. Michael Jordan is your starting left guard. Trey Hopkins is your center. John Miller is your right guard. Yep. And Bobby Hart is your right tackle. So. Interesting they have Jordan starting at guard. I heard that before. (laughs) (laughs) I immediately had to go up and down the depth chart like, please tell me they have a Pippin. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. There is none. No. So you know they won't win. (laughs) Because Jordan doesn't win anything without Pippin. (laughs) Paul? Yep. Where can I find hashtag sports content? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Prove me wrong. Two minutes in my back. Yep, (laughs) prove me wrong. Uh, Change my mind. You like that guy? (laughs) Conceivably, okay? Mm -hmm. The Buffalo Bills could be playing the third team in a row that drafts in the top ten. Yeah. Yeah, very possible. Uh, so, and, and all of them have offensive line problems. Like, yes. you look across the Gi- the Jets line, problems. The Giants line, problems. I mean, the it, even if the, even if Cordy Glenn were healthy, you still have two Bills from last year starting for the Bengals. And well, we Glenn know was two years ago. Well, two years ago, yeah. yeah. But you, I, we know how the story ends. Right? We've seen this before. And not, <laughs> not that Glenn's not good. Glenn's good. Like I take Glenn over Dawkins right now. I would. I take I take Cordy Glenn over Dawkins, but he's not healthy, which is why he's not on the Bills anymore. You take an injured Glenn over Dawkins, man. You really hate him. <laughs> uh, about the line, they're on their third left tackle now because their yeah. original plan. You said it was. Yeah. Played, did you just say that, or was, was I distracted? N- uh, I did not say it. They but went they to play, They drafted Williams it. for the left tackle to put Glenn to guard. Now they had to move click, click, Glenn out to guard or to tackle because he wasn't. Mm-hmm. And then now they're down to their third left tackle, which Hughes has to be salivating about. Oh, God, but, yeah. But, I mean, is Mixon was banged up. Uh, he may be back. You got Giovanni Bernard, the well-dressed Giovanni Bernard. Mm-hmm. You got Andy Dalton, who's no slouch. I mean, he's kind of a su- minor hero to Buffalo. Yeah. Um, Bills are finally playing at home. <laughs> You're right. It's about time. Yeah. Uh, so... Everybody in the locker room is going to be jacked up. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bengals are coming off, the, you know, two losses. They're playing a team that's two and zero, who's really on a hot streak. It was a hot defense, and it's. It seems like the feeling that I had before the Giants game, I'm having now again before the Bengals game. Like mm-hmm. this is a very winnable game. I want but to. But I see felt the like that going against the Bengals before, and they always prove me wrong. <laughs> they always. always they always seem to find a way to just just be a thorn in Buffalo's side. So what, I'll, I'll take the opposite side, because we talked about this before, as far as the Bengals go. Put your coach's hat on. You are Zach Taylor for, for the Bengals, All right. head coach. How do you beat the Bills? You beat them with speed on the outside. It's, I mean, the truth is, we've seen two very dynamic running backs not like Bell was the whole Jets offense, and he Barkley was. was the whole Giants yes, offense. I agree. Yeah. And while they were effective, truthfully speaking, they didn't put up numbers like we've seen them do against, you know, no, uh, against know, lesser opponents. And to your point as well, real quick before you get uh, go on, two veteran quarterbacks. It was like there was two rookie quarterbacks right, exactly. that couldn't get those guys the ball. Exactly right. Two, well, I mean, Darnold in his second year. I, I was thinking more Dalton. You know what I mean? I'm thinking yeah. Dalton. So, um, yeah, you got you got Manning who won two Super Bowls. The guy mm-hmm. should be able to get the, his best player the ball, and they only, he only touched it 20 times. Well, you have to look at Bengals across the board, right? Okay. This, this is how things went. On the day, 17 rushes between Mixon and Bernard. Really? Mm-hmm. Today? Today. Wow. Do you want to know how many yards they got? Up. No, mix and play. Run on how many yards they got? So out of 17 rushes? Yep. 33. 23. Wow. 
Mixon averaged 1.5, Bernard 1. And this is against the 49ers, who have... Who have a really stout front. They have 17 first-round picks. On yeah, front. on that defensive front line. <laughs> yeah, they're very good. They got the Forrest Bunker, good. Eric Armstead, uh, uh, but, Solomon Thomas. They but, got, they got what Bosa. I'm, but what I'm saying is, don't you think that the Bengals are going to say, okay, listen, we just ran into a wall in San Francisco. We're going to, we're going to Buffalo next week into where wall. we're going to run into another wall. Don't you think that the lessons that they learned from this game they're just going to apply to the next game? Because Tyler Boyd, 10 receptions for a buck 22. John Ross, four receptions for a buck 12. Four for a buck well, 12. Well, he had a 66-yard touchdown, so he had yeah. three, four, 50-something, which is – he's the burner. Yeah. He's the burner. Right. That notwithstanding – they're not going to be able to run the ball against the Bills. At mm-hmm. least they're going to try to establish that they can. That's what they're going to try to do. Uh, we all know Cordy Glenn, the history of Cordy Glenn. Uh, you, if they try to just run the Bengals, mm-hmm. he's, he, can, he can do it, but he's not going to play. I think in order to get the Bengals' offense going, I, did, I disagree with you. I think they're going to try and pass early. early? Yeah, they're going to they, – why not drop Boyd and then Ross – and, I mean, it doesn't really matter what other wide receiver you have over there. Willis, you can put Willis over there. It doesn't matter. What you um, talking about? <laughs> you want to try and get Ross on Trey, right? That's the because, you want. Right, because if you put Ross on Trey, then the Bills know that, they're, that Trey's going to need help over the top, especially on Ross. So if you drop them in a bunch formation on the right side, you're going to get the matchup you want. You're going to control that matchup. So you target Ross early. You try and get that help where you want it, and then that opens up the run game well, because you get very... the Bills out of nickel. You got to get the Bills out of nickel. You get the Bills out of nickel, you can pass on them all day long. It would be very, it would be very fitting that the, the Bengals come out if they get the ball first and they go out in four wide, and you mm-hmm. see Zoe already at defensive tackle. Yeah, and they come out. Yeah, there. because if I were the Bills, I would come out like you said. I would come out in nickel mm-hmm. because. It, it, the front four can control that line. Right. I think, it, it, and then you got Milano and Edmonds to clean everything up after that. So that being said, it, it's you have to give the illusion that you're at least going to try to run. Agreed. So yeah, I agree. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised of a play action screen to start the game. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised at a, at a draw mm-hmm. to start the game. But if that draw gets nailed three yards in the backfield, you know right. you're going to be like. Right. The coach from Unnecessary Roughness. That stupid play <laughs> throws the card out. Well, you know, this Mixon was uh, officially ineffective across the board against the 49ers. Because even with his rushing, if you add in his receiving stats, it's not much better. So Mixon, all purpose, 14 touches for 27 yards. Mm. That's receiving and rushing together. That's ineffective. Like you're, that's not even. You're not even worrying about that. It's not even a concern for you. You no. don't care. But he's he's still an explosive player. You have to account for. Yeah. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that the the Niners defense is better than the Bills, even though they are pretty. That front that front seven is impressive. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I agree. That front seven is impressive. Front seven lets that linebacker group go eat. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Speaking of eating, I don't know what that was. Yes. Can I have two large double doubles? An angel cream donut. That's right. The and truth. two pumpkin spice donuts. Are we getting white girl wasted in here? You want pumpkin spice donuts? Are you okay? I'm fine. Pumpkin spice donuts? Yeah. Sorry, we haven't been in a car in a month. I got excited. I need to give you something to make fun of me for. In the same bag. Not even separated. (laughs) Grown men ordering pumpkin spice donuts. I just want to be clear. I did not want the pumpkin spice donuts. He ordered two of them. Have you seen two grown men order two pumpkin spice donuts? No. You're ridiculous. It's not my fault. Pumpkin spice donuts. Thank you very much. Embarrassing. Pumpkin spice. Have a good night. I will. I'm gonna be in in pumpkin heaven. Do you want to chug that down with some white claws like we're on spring break? <laughs> I can't. That's the only reason I ordered it was that comment right there. Oh god. I gotta watch Power tonight. Night of Champions. What's Power? Never mind. I'm
about to get yelled at again. It doesn't matter. It doesn't You're matter. five seasons behind. I'm not going to start. <laughs> oh, it's it, it is the season though. Now apparently it's pumpkin spice season, but it is also we had to put lights on our camera system. Season first time lights in the. In the oh, Murano. I didn't. I didn't turn them on high enough. There we go. First time in the Murano. Now we're cooking. Lights on full blast. See if we can get pulled over. No, Donnie Brook tells us this is legal. Donnie Brook. Donnie Brook sounds like a cop. Is he a cop? He is a cop. Oh yeah. Okay. Little <laughs> phenomenal. I miss this. Um, just really quick. Uh, can a donut be a spirit animal? <laughs> Continue our discussion. <laughs> I, but I don't. I don't think. Obviously, it's. I go back to the any given Sunday quote, but with the Bills going home, a lot of momentum, it seems like in years past, this is the time where the Bills get kicked in the teeth. You know what I mean? It's an yeah. AFC game um, against a team that's 0-2. It's a very winnable game. It's a time that you can grow. I, if, I like to you see the time. the Patriots to, right afterwards. Though. Yeah. It's, I don't – but you're not – you don't play it so close to the vest that's a close game. Like, you don't want to have too many tells. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to unleash any more new stuff for the Patriots that they can't adjust for. Playing the Patriots at home, and both teams are 3-0, and is a big deal. I look at this a little bit of a different way. I don't think the Bills have really had to put a lot of stuff on film. And they still won. And they're still winning football games, yeah. Because look at what they've done, right? You'd say, well, you know, they're easy teams. Sure. They drove down the field. They made them look easy. <laughs> they made them look easy. But, I mean, they drove down the field against the Giants and scored touchdowns on three out of their first four drives from the other side of the field, right? Yeah. That's great. Right? Those are good things. Even though they didn't score really after that. Well, it was really fluky. Like, it wasn't like I generated a turnover and then went down and scored. Right. Like, they got punt. Yeah, the defense made the stop. Mm -hmm. The Giants did a good job of getting the ball deep in their territory. Bills just went down and scored. That that punt, the special teams play where they pinned the Bills on the two, phenomenal play. Yeah. Great job. Phenomenal play. I love but that play. But there's a lot to like here. Even though the Bills are 2-0, and I know there's a lot of trepidation around, oh, you know, are they really 2-0? But, yeah, they are because the things that they've done, they, they won a game where they gave up four more turnovers than they recovered, a game where they actually recovered zero turnovers, yeah. right? Here, they uh, they intercepted Manning twice, right? So yeah. now you won the turnover battle. The second one wasn't – I know. It didn't mean. But here's the thing I, I want to ask you, and I know you're going to love this because you're sneaky like that. I like it when you talk like that. <laughs> We talk about because we know how stingy Tom Brady and the Patriots are. I'm looking ahead because that's yeah I fall victim to that as well. Yep. If Tom Brady and the Patriots, which are very stingy turning the ball over, does it give you more confidence that the Bills haven't generated a lot of turnovers to score points? Because they really have generated one legit one that was Trent Murphy fluke one. Yep. And they didn't score on that drive. It was like near the end of the half. Right. So that being said. They really haven't had to have a turnover to go generate points. Does that, no. does that give you more comfort going into New England or, or playing against New England than it would if they had, in these first two games, like six turnovers? You know, I, it's funny because I actually look at that a little different. I, I'm more comfortable with the fact that when they did the turn, turn the ball over, they really didn't give up points. So not the Bills generating the turnovers and scoring off of them. It's when they gave the turnovers up, they really didn't give up that many points. It's apples and oranges we're talking about. I know, I know, but that's, I hear the point that you're making, yeah. right? And I, I do look at it from the opposite perspective. I don't look at it the same way. So you're talking about... I'm the, talking about the Bills' defense getting, they've gotten two turnovers in two games. Yeah, there were neither, gifts. Neither one, were gifts. Yeah, neither one being leading to points. Mm -hmm. And they were able to generate, you know, 45 points. Mm -hmm. um, and the defense... Like they haven't, they haven't relied on those turnovers to go down and score points. Like they had a short right. field and they scored. Right. 
they legitimately are driving down the field, mm-hmm. doing it the hard way. Yeah. With a second year quarterback, first year running back, mm-hmm. you got Frank Gore who's 165 years old. That notwithstanding, but the point is that they're starting to gel. They're starting to generate points without ne- with, without needing a turnover. Mm-hmm. What you're saying is that they haven't uh, the turnovers they've given up mm-hmm. on the offensive side of the ball haven't led to too many points. Right. Yeah, except so, for eight, <clears throat> just eight. Yeah, but the reason that I bring that up is because you have to understand that with Allen, turnovers are going to happen. This offense is going to turn the football over. Yeah. Even though they're trying to mitigate all the risk, right and Allen still made some great throws in some risky situations today. Yeah. When he was on the run, he threw a dart to Knox. Just an absolute dart. It was beautiful. Right along the right sideline. Freaking Brown by 15 yards. Right. So those those are the learning curves. But that's the difficult throw. Is running as fast as you can and corkscrewing your body. Yep. But he's done that so many times. That's what he's comfortable with. Yep. Standing in a clean pocket to throw down That field, seems to be it's, a learning experience. I've never him. been here before. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a learning experience for him. But you know that's that's not uncommon. You see you see that a lot with like quarterbacks that are still developing, like in high school and early college, where the coaches give them fake reads so that way when they get to their primary read, all they have to do is react. Right? You see that a lot with high school quarterbacks where if you're staring at the receiver the whole time, they're gonna miss that throw. They're going to miss it because they're going to look at it. They're going to stare at it all day. They're going to throw it behind the guy. They're going to throw it over him. It doesn't matter. So you see a lot of developing quarterbacks in high school and college. They'll look to the left side, pump fake, and then throw their hot read on this side because all they want to do is pump fake, look, is he open, go. That's it. Take take yeah. the thought process out of it. Is he open, go. That's it. I think the biggest thing that Allen's starting to realize as a quarterback right now, that he, different than we did last year, he would wait for guys to legitimately be open yeah. to, before he threw it. If not, he ran. Yep, that's not the case. No, that's he's not throwing, the case in the NFL. He's like, throwing in tighter windows this, this year. This is open in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he's doing that. And then he's starting to realize the second part of his, his gift is that when he rolls out, zones change. Yeah. And then guys start to open up. Yep. So and, that is the that is the second beauty of what he's what I've seen him do in two games. Those are the two things that I've seen him do. Yeah, and it looks great, it right? Does. He broke some ankles. Uh, there's defensive end coming in. Had a clean shot at him, and Allen broke his ankles and was still able to roll out, roll out to the right. And yeah. he hit Brown down to the twenty-three, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, down that other I think that was, yeah, I think that's right. So, I mean, Allen can buy time, but the question becomes: Are teams going to realize that we just need to keep him in the pocket? Do you think that's a way to the way to play against him? We just need to keep him in the pocket. We I need think to make was, him play quarterback. That was the narrative last year when he didn't have any receiving help. Yeah. Now he has weapons. Cole Beasley Guys is a dangerous can, weapon, man. But you know what, though, if, if they're not overusing him at all, I don't want—I don't want to skip over the Bengals again. But the Patriots' defense is, is used to that type of player practicing against them for years. Yep. So they've—they're already accustomed to that. They're, there's, he's the only guy in the NFL probably that can replicate Beasley what he does on a daily mm-hmm. basis. So yep. he's going to run probably more scout on that on that week. Yeah. So I mean. But as far as the Bengals game goes, I mean, 28 to 14 is not out of the realm of possibility. No. Same, same thing as today. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. But we'll see. You know, that, that Bengals offense can throw the football. But the problem is they've had to throw the football the last two games. I'm curious to see what happens if they, in that first drive they put up points and all of a sudden they're in the driver's seat. Like the Bills have let every team get in this year. They've let the other team get in the driver's seat. Yeah, but they don't care after that. They're like, okay, they scored, whatever, let's go back out. Yeah, that. I mean, that is sort of a nice, it's nice to have blinders onto that, but at the same token, you know, it's still a little, don't you want to lead the race like once in your life? Listen, if we take care of our responsibilities defensively and our gaps and everything, and the offense is able to execute just the play that they're given, you can win games. They're starting to realize that. Yep. You're not down 21 points in every game now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, playing like your hair's on fire. Right. So, okay. I mean, like you said, man, we'll see. We will see. 